you at least voice how you're feeling to that person about, hey, I want to be your friend. I really enjoy spending time with you. What What's up with this? Why do you keep blowing me off? Nothing wrong with hanging out with a couple. There's no such thing as necessarily being the third wheel when you're all adults. You're just hanging out and having fun. Sounds like this person might not want to come to terms with it, but you might be emotionally detached if you're thinking about this. Do you guys know The Rock is 80? <laughs> Stop. Wayne Did the you know Dro he's an actual rock? He's graphite. He's literally, <laughs> lightning struck a boulder and out of it he walked. If you're like a superhuman, and you could hear really, really well like this. If. Do you Go think on. you could always hear people farting? And how awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, you could probably hear so many disgusting sounds. I think I think most superhumans would just would go that. absolutely insane. I would do that. Somebody's, like, gut just, like, yeah. but then Because it drives me nuts when someone's, like, chewing gum, straight up mouth open. Courtney was doing it for a bit the other yesterday during Try Not To Laugh, but even then I was like, oh, I want to die. Yeah. I want to die. What if you could just hear that in surround sound from, like, 10 feet away? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll die. Like a cafeteria would just be the worst. Well, hey, 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 howdy, folks. Uh, welcome to the Smosh cast. Gosh, it's been a while since I've- It's been a hot mom. I've been on here. Uh, today, I am joined by the illustrious, the elusive, the illest, Damien Haas and Mari Takahashi. Oh, hey, we're the, we're, wow, were they illustrious? We, yeah, we're the Illuminati. Yeah. The Illuminati. Making the, the triangle. Yeah. It <laughs> is yeah. real. It's funny, we are, uh, as as most people say in Smosh lore, we are the big three. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I said that in a meeting when they said that we were going to be working together. I was like, oh, the big three, which I say about everything. And then for some reason, that was the time people were like, wow, you just gave yourself like a title. I'm like, no, I say it about everything. This is another episode of the Advice Cast, Ooh. where you guys sent in your advice and we're going to give you the most expert advice that's totally backed up. We are board certified expert advice givers. But before we get to that, hi, Mari, how are you? I'm good. What I'm good. You, what have you been doing? Where have I've, you been going? What's What crazy lands have you explored recently? I've actually been local. Like I haven't gone what? anywhere lately. And I think this year I'm really going to work on staying here. What is, I was everywhere last that's year. That's hilarious because I feel like most people are like I want to travel, travel more. more. Yeah, They're like I don't want to leave my house. Yeah, I'm on a really great creative kick mm. right now, and I feel like I've been in a creative rut for a while. And it, it's a kind of a long story, but something hit me in December. I, I was following my mom around when she was doing her last Nutcracker shows, Aww. and I realized while following her around, I really have not like done a good job documenting her and like our mm. experiences together. And so I was following her around with the camera just because I wanted to like get these moments and uh, it's something stuck in me and where I'm like, I want to make content with my mom. Whoa, and that's so cool. Yeah, so it, it I'm, I, I've been on this creative kick since then. And that's so, great. Yeah, that was back in uh, December. And so I'm excited for for doing stuff this hmm. year. What exactly are you are you filming with your mom? Is it like kind of like a figure out like who she is as a person? Yeah. Or? So mm. I want it to be, um, Damien, you'll like this. It'll be okay. just an interview show, but we'll be speaking in Japanese with it cool. being subtitled. Because um, that's That'll how my mom and I communicate. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just guess what we're talking about. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay. So this is the part where they both are uh, seeing if they're caught up on The Bachelor and who they like. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. No. This, this is where they fight. This is where they fight. And You're they like full really on muscly. smiling. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Can uh, can can uh, Papa Takahashi jump in for occasional like comedic relief? I I really want to do um, a segment with him called Beer with Dad, which means That's beer funny. with yeah. Dad. Where I just get some beers with my dad. I don't even drink. Beer, yeah, I was but gonna I'll say you're not a you're not a drinker. I know I don't drink alcohol, but I think I'll just maybe have non-alcoholic beer, and my dad can have. Some That's beers. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yum. Yeah, yeah. I love your dad. He's a he's a character. He's adorable. I don't, yeah. think, I've, I don't think I've met your dad. Really? I don't think oh, so. dude, mm. he's got to come by the studio. He'll, he'll, he'll look. He'll want to look at all this uh, oh, all the radio cameras. equipment. Oh yeah, because he's a big ham radio guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, That's he's got cool. a ham shack in the house, which is okay. My I old know room. it's for radio, but just let me imagine what I think that is for a moment. Just <laughs> just for me. Yeah, <laughs> ham shack. <laughs> Because ham radio is like you, you just tune to a, 
a random frequency and then you hope that you get somebody else that's on a ham radio yeah. and they could be completely on the other side of the world, right? Yep. And, and you know how my dad talks. He's just like, hello, this is Teru. You know, he's just kind of like just really out there and no, super unabashed. But does, he's really proud because he is, uh, if there's any emergencies that take out like telephone poles and stuff in our city or no, no in our county, mm, my yeah. dad's the go-to person. That's cool. And he's just, I don't know if he's prepared, but he like, mm, yeah. he's really proud of it. That's really cool. <laughs> well, that's cool. We need people like that. Oh, yeah. We need a Teru. Yeah, we all everyone need needs. We stand terror. Everyone needs That's the a next teddy. t-shirt. Well, okay, let's, uh, well, Damien, how have you been? I've been pretty good, thanks, how man. How are the floofs? The floofs, uh, the floofs are good. Um, they were definitely happy to see me after tour. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be missing me once, uh, we, we're filming this right before we go uh, to Australia. Mm-hmm. So, Australia. Australia. So, it's been... It's been a lot of uh, fun the past month, but it's also been a lot of like life maintenance. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't been really starting anything new because, you know, we're in between these long periods of travel. Mm -hmm. So it's once again just been I've got a couple voiceover job, one that I'm doing tomorrow, which is cool. Been doing the normal like we film some days I stream and then some days I record voiceover auditions. Then I go to bed like it's very like business as usual right now. I think I think it's easy to kind of like lose track of like all the things we're sort of doing when you're doing so much stuff. Mm-hmm. And then and then if you're not doing anything, it's like, gosh, like I wish I was doing something. Yeah. You know, it, mm-hmm. you're never going to find that balance, but I That's think it's true. I think it's important to to, you know, try try to not let everything blow by without yeah. acknowledging kind of the the awesome opportunities that we have. and Oh, for totally. Sure. I mean, yeah. Australia is going to be awesome. Oh, for sure. I sure hope I didn't come across that way. No, no, like, no. Yeah, I'm going to Australia. Like, <laughs> no, it's incredibly exciting. It's yeah. just, you know, when it becomes part of your day-to-day, um, it is your day-to-day. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've been doing a lot of, like, uh, major cleaning of my room. Like, I just want to feel more comfortable in my space. And I've started finding all this, like, video game merch kind of stuff that has just piled up. Some of it has isn't even open. And I remember being a teenager watching things like E3 and just seeing a T-shirt with a video game title on it. I'm like, I want that. That's all I ever want. Like, that'd be so cool. And now it's my day-to-day <laughs> life. And I'm like, oh, I need to start giving this away to friends. I don't have room for all this mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like you're not grateful. It's just like... It becomes your life. We're like yeah. constantly adjusting that bar and sometimes it's hard mm-hmm. to like just step away and look at where you are. Yeah. Because I remember at the end of last year, I'm like, oh man, I did nothing this year. Like I was so down mm. in the dumps and then I started writing like what I did last year. And by the end of it, I had this list of like things that I, you know, moments that I, that really meant a lot to me and, um, you know, accomplishments or whatever. Yeah. And then I look back and I'm like, man, I get so stuck in my head. Like, I feel like I do nothing. And then if I actually write it down, I'm like, okay, I I did stuff. I think the tricky thing about that is it's in a way your superpower or like it's the superpower of a creative individual that actually gets to have a creative job where like you're not satisfied with what you've done. It doesn't feel that special right away. So therefore you're always striving to do the next thing and do more. And that's what pushes you to actually do it. I, I feel like I would have a tendency to like rest on my laurels if I really sat down and was like, wow, what an awesome thing I did last month. And that was just last month. I've got all the time in the world. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah. 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 It's 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 definitely a double-edged sword. It is. <laughs> It's about that balance, like you said. Maybe maybe it's impossible to find true balance between the two, but I think you should always strive mm-hmm. yeah. to do so. Yeah. Well let's let's get to the uh let's get to the advicing, shall we? Let's do it. Advice. How do I fix a contact that is screwing up? Oh no. Just baby. take your finger and just swear, swish it around. Just, just <laughs> rip it clean out. Mm-hmm. Bare hands. And just take your your whole eyeball Take out. My eye. Sorry. Wait, do you wear contacts more? Not anymore. I got LASIK like Ooh. 11 Ooh, years ago. Oh, that's cool. It's still, still good. Still Don't good. Don't you have to redo it like every 45 minutes? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not because it's a horrifying surgery. For some oh, people, it terrible. deteriorates. I know with, with Ryan Higa. Yeah, he was his, complaining about it. His LASIK starting to like get a little so so. Yeah. Mine's good still. That's good. I've, I've been thinking about it. Sorry. Anyway, this first one comes from Super. Superist. S- Superist Shane. Superist. Superist Shane. Uh, They said, I had a really frustrating conversation with a friend about him not voting yesterday. Mm. How can I help encourage him without being a total butthole? Mm. I think a lot of people get so caught up with, they they think voting is just voting for the next president. 
Mm -hmm. And voting is so much more than that. It's, you know, your local elections, it's your local council members. It's, I mean, the big ones, the things that are most important to me are like the propositions like of like, you know, oh, we want to build a road here or, oh, we want to fund schools more. Mm -hmm. Oh, we want to, you know, do this and this and that. And those are the things that encourage me to go out and vote because I actually feel like I can have a say in my community. Voting for a president, some people feel very disaffected because they're like, oh, well, you know, electoral college, like in California, they're like, well, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. I still think people should vote. Uh, for who they want <laughs> to be president. Yeah. I think that's very important. But what's, what's you know, even more important is things at the local level, things that things that actually will affect you. For instance, uh, in 2008, uh, there was a proposition called Prop 8, which you may remember, Mari, which wanted to ban gay marriage in California. And uh, it actually passed uh, banning gay marriage. Oh, because like everyone thought, like there's no way that's going to pass, and they didn't vote. There was a very, there was a very large campaign funded largely by a certain organization, mm-hmm. Chick Fil A. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're getting, you're getting warm. So I think a lot of people just kind of went along with it, and there was a lot of these like commercials, and they kind of seemed to be alluding to like. Oh well, what if there's like like gay parents? Like you don't want your gay you don't want gay parents spreading gay the gay agenda, mm-hmm. you know, and all this. The crap. sanctity of marriage was a huge yeah. debate of like, well, if if it's not you know if it's not sacred anymore, then what is marriage? Then your marriage to a man and a woman means nothing now. And th- yeah. there was a lot of a uh, literal fear. contract. Of oh property. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and like yeah. Uh, I remember because I remember some people being like, well, if we're just gonna let two men marry, what's next? We're gonna we can marry our dogs. That's, yeah. And it's like I, I don't that. know, man. Is that something you are actively <laughs> wanting to do? And if so, we should talk about that. Yeah. But how do you how do you deal with that and explain those kind of things to people and not be a jerk about it? My my thought would be you straight up just don't be a jerk about it. Like don't let yourself get too emotional and upset as they're talking to you. Every like if you're trying to convince someone and they're throwing it like things at you like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, give them a counterpoint as calmly as possible and be like, What do you think about that? What I've just said. And if they're setting their ways just being like, Well, no, nah, no, I just know it doesn't matter, then maybe that's a wall you can't budge. But my thought about it is then afterwards, um, that friend is not allowed to complain about literally <laughs> anything ever again. Yeah. <laughs> Be it be it like a president or a situation, or they're like, man, there's a pothole in this road. Mm-hmm. You have to look at them and be like, shut up, like, because oh, we could have fixed vote that. For Measure M, well, that's fixing your... all the potholes. Yeah. yeah, no, sorry, that's literally. I had a lot of conversations for the last presidential election. Like, it's it's a matter of you know, people are like, well, it's not going to matter. It's just really not. Like, I don't I don't like either person. I'm like, well, then sh- shut up <laughs> forever. Shut up forever. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I think things are so politically charged right now, mm-hmm. and it weighs really heavily on people. As soon as you start talking about, well, are you voting? Are you not voting? People feel really defensive all of a sudden. Sure. It's kind of like, yeah. uh, you know, talking about really charged things like religion or your lifestyle. It's like you're asking somebody to do something that they had not done before. Yeah. And if you go at it in a in an attackful way, they're going to run away. And yeah. ultimately, yeah. that's not what we want. I think mm. you're really right. You, we have to empower people to understand that they have the the power to make a difference. And I think for me, it took a long time. I'd, I'd always voted since I was 18. But until I started really like like marching around like Congress in Washington, D.C. and like talking to legislators, which I never thought that I had any sort of responsibility, power, nor like audacity to do. I didn't realize just how much power we do have Mm -hmm. as citizens. Yeah. They're they're elected officials who work really for their people and for their constituents and for us. And I think if that's the conversation you can have with people, it's like, no, the power is in your hands. You get to do this. It's your choice and you make changes. I think that's a better conversation than like, why aren't you doing it? You know, you're not being responsible enough. And if they're not convinced, we we should just, you know, ship those people to a country where your voice isn't heard. Yeah, because there they are can... a lot of those still. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we. I think we take it for granted. That's true. 100%. And I think you brought up a good point by saying everything is so like politically charged nowadays between like multiple sides or just two sides. It's sort of now more than ever become like a team sport. 
mm-hmm. where it's no longer you don't even know what you think about a certain topic until you hear what does my team think. Ah, yes, that's what my team and I think that too. Like people, I'd have so much more respect for politics in general if people would take a specific to- topic and talk about both sides and let you sort of figure out what you think. But now it's literally about like, hey they want to take this from you. We got to beat them. And it's like, well, they want to turn everything into this. So we got to beat them. And nobody's actually talking about fixing anything. Like it must suck to grow up right now and think, oh, that's what politics are. Of course you're disillusioned. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's a good idea to remind them, hey, this is what it's actually about. Like yeah. you were saying. Yeah. But it's yeah. also, but it's also more than just, it's more than just the president. It's, yes. It's, it's your Congress people. It's your it's your representatives. Like, sorry, senators. It's your representatives. Like, mm-hmm. it's that is so in a lot of ways more important. Mm-hmm. Than, it is than the For president sure. because they're the ones that are passing the yeah. bills and the laws. Yeah, the president like, can. They have the veto power, it out, but yeah. And then and then the the Senate says and the Senate and the House they say yes or no to it. It's so much more important to vote on things beyond the presidency. And I know a lot of people just get really hyper-focused on like, no, it's the big guy at the top. And it's like, well, government is is structured in a way that, you know, as long as we keep voting and as long as we keep staying engaged mm-hmm. in politics and, and staying engaged as citizens, we can't lose it. Yeah. Yeah. But but the thing is we have to stay engaged and we have to stay informed. I think it's um, really easy for it to feel too big to change. There's there's, there's a John Mayer song and like the it's called uh, Body is a Wonderland. <laughs> Close. It's waiting on on the world to oh, change. Oh, that's right. And it's like it feels too big to actually make any impact, so you just kind of sit back and like someone else will take care of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how you lose your freedoms. Yes. Democracy is really fragile and we have to always keep fighting to keep it and the moment we stop fighting to have the rights that we have right now we can we can lose it very quickly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think as long as i mean i think it's it's kind of a it's our responsibility to stay informed yeah yeah last piece of advice lead by example that's true you're not going to change that person but you can lead by example. All right, let's move on to something uh, ha- uh, much happier. Um, <laughs> Melissa Joyce uh, said, would you stay or leave a 10 year relationship even if you love the person so much, but you're not as happy like you used to, or do you think there's a way to make things work? <sighs> That's way happier. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> appreciate it. Well, Mari, I mean, you're the only person that, that made it past a, 10, 10 year mark, right? Almost. March 15th will be our 10 year. Oh. You got married on the Ides of March? No, we didn't get, we got married April 5th, <laughs> okay. but our 10 year. <laughs> got it. It's March. When, what is that? What's the Ides it's, of? It's a, it's a thing with the beware of the Ides of March and it's when the Julius Caesar gets oh. stabbed. All right. I'm not Greek, so. Wait, is that Julius Caesar? <laughs> I'm having a brain oh, wait, is, I wait, Caesar. Know. Shakespeare, Shakespeare? Roman. Roman. I don't know. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's a Shakespeare thing. Be aware the Ides of March. I okay. have half a theater degree. So right. my previous relationship, I was in for seven and a half or eight and a half. I forget which one. I think it was eight and a half. And we were on track to get married, do the whole shebang. And um walking away from that relationship was surprisingly the easiest thing because I was emotionally detached for so long. And it sounds like this person might not want to to come to terms with it, mm-hmm. but you might be emotionally detached if you're thinking about this. If you're not happy, that's a really, really good time to readjust and recaliber. And I think it's really scary when you've been in a relationship for that long because there's so much pressure. Everyone around you, your whole life, everyone knows you as you with this person. There's probably, you know, just so much history behind yeah. it. And without it, you feel like you can't stand up on your two two legs. But you can. People say life is too short. I say that life is too long for you to be unhappy. Wow. <laughs> That's good. I, I would say, though, that, you know, this person says, you know, even if you love the person so much, but you're not as happy like you used to be. So it's like, are you to be expected to just be like super happy forever with this with this person or do the benefits outweigh the 
the negatives. You know what I mean? Like mm. I'm kind of I, I I don't really sit on either side of this because I because I can see both I can see both sides. Like I, I feel like after ten years, your sort of objectives might also change in a relationship. Like mm-hmm. maybe you were madly in love with this person, you were obsessed with you know something about them. And then over those years, things changed. They changed, you changed. Is it so much about being as happy as possible always? Like that's, we all know that's not possible. Well, but you should, you should strive for it though, I'd say, right? Like the very fact that you're asking this question means that you are not happy where you're at right now. So at the very least, that should be your goal to change somehow, whether with this person or not with this person. I'm like you, it could go either way. I think the important thing is if you're recognizing this for yourself, it might be a good idea to coo- as hard as it is, communicate it. And maybe see if you can go to couples counseling, like see if you guys want to work through that together because you do deserve to be as happy as you can be um, if something lies within your power to change. And if there's no change that happens, then you go from there. It's not the craziest thing in the world to leave a 10 year relationship. I would assume it's, you know, like you said, you've you've built your life with this person. All the memories you have of recent years involve them, too. So you don't necessarily know who you are outside of that. But like. You're not happy right now. That sucks. And and I think you can still love a person for the rest oh, of your totally. life and not be with them. And Absolutely. I think that's something we don't hear often enough. Mm-hmm. Or it's like you can you can love all of your past, you know, people that you've been with. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take away anything from the current status of anything. I I I, I truly believe that. But it's scary yeah. to think it that way as well. So you also have to define like what you're looking for relationship wise, because like, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a pretty like classic guy. Like I would like to be married one day and it would be nice to like have that partner forever. But at the same time, we are sort of conditioned in a way like that's a social thing to be like, you will marry one person and be with them forever. And that's whatever. That's not necessarily how we're wired all mm-hmm. the time. And not some people might be, but some people aren't. So sometimes if you have a partner for 10 years, Years, that's fantastic. What an awesome 10 years. Thank you for that gift. But like mm-hmm. trying to conform your happiness to, you know, I've been with you for 10 years and that's the normal, maybe detrimental. Figure out what relationship ideally would look like to you. I don't know. Yeah. I don't and know. recalibrating what that happy is. You yeah. Know, if it's labored every single day, then it's something that, that can change. Or And if it can't, then it, it might be time to make that hard decision. It's also okay to be alone too. It is okay That's to be alone. That's normal. Mm-hmm. We're we're at a time where we're rewriting everything about what social constructs were, mm-hmm. what relationships were, what jobs were. We're literally rewriting everything. This generation yeah. is bananas. Love it. Oh, yeah. We're taking everything and just being like, nope, wiping it clean. We're starting over. Mm-hmm. And so- And if you don't want to be alone, it's just a swipe of a phone. Yeah. That's like, true. It's, it's kind of-, it's kind of Crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's literally, if you don't want to be alone right now for the next hour, then it's a swipe of a, a, of a phone, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's, it it is the freedoms that were never talked about, never allowed. It was always just this, um, uh, stigma to it. And so don't be afraid to rewrite it. 10 years is a long time and it's a, it's a, it's a time to cherish. That's a good run. That's Mm -hmm. a good run. But I mean, yeah, it's it's not really about the length. If you're not if you're not happy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you're not completely happy, I just people de- people thriving. people define you know happiness and fulfillment in different ways. If you know if you have a kid, like maybe maybe that's where the happiness is directed and not mm-hmm. towards your not towards your partner. I mean, sure. I was talking with my friend about like is a forever relationship something something that we think is is possible and they were talking to their friend who's who's married with a kid and like about like passion between like partners and if that's important and and the the woman was like no not really like we have our child and that's and that's the focus and we understand that and like we 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 get along great Mm -hmm. and like it's it's great but like the passion between us is not important to us Sure. And I was just like, whoa. Yeah. So, I mean. I think things shift when you have a child. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Sometimes Some they don't. Some people yeah. are just shit. 
parents too. <laughs> sure. But again, I think you can draw that back to like you define what a relationship, what your desires, what everything yeah. is to you. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it's very important to know that uh, the Ides of March thing could have also come from King Lear or Oedipus. I forget. <laughs> Thank you. Beware the sexy mom. Yeah. Be that's worried. Oedipus. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> on um, that note. Uh, that's going to make no sense for anyone that doesn't know what Oedip Oedipus is. Mm -hmm. that, that was it, right? It was like guy that was attracted yes. to his mom? Okay. Yes. Well, make sure. n yes and no. Oh, okay. He, he was R tricked into like... He was abandoned as a baby due to a prophecy that he would like screw a bunch of things up and uh, then found by a different couple and then uh, became king through doing that and uh, married the current queen. And then it turns out, oh, that's the couple that abandoned him. So he ended up accidentally marrying his mom. Hmm. But like you can view that as like that type of theater is like all about punishment by the gods and all that stuff because of all these things. But God timeline doesn't work the same way as people timeline is. So he was punished for getting together with his mom and the punishment was being abandoned by a baby and then having to stab out his eyes later. So it literally so it's the thing like, leads to the thing. It's kind of like back to the future. A little bit. <laughs> The punishment led to the thing that he did that made him be punished. And that's the logic of the gods. You cannot right? run away from destiny. That's that is true. Doc Brown. Because destiny is pretty good. And <laughs> they keep updating the game. Des so. Oh, I thought destiny the band. Uh, she, had a, she had a kid. Did you hear about destiny that? Destiny had a kid? Yeah. And they formed the a band. It's called Destiny's Kid. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I don't know. We're, on, we're right. stuck in a bit. So on to the next uh, question. <laughs> Leave it in. Danvers D'Amato said, one of my friends have been blowing me off for a few months and talks to me less, which obviously upsets me, but I'm always happy when talking to her and don't want to end the friendship. What should I do? Uh, communication. I think most times when people ask advice, the, advi the answer is always communication. Um, first of all, your friend might need some space and it's okay to give your friend from sp some space, but it's also okay if you're comfortable enough the friend in the friendship to check in about it and be like, hey, you know, I've noticed I've seen you a little bit less lately. Um, I would love to see you more if that's okay. And also if you want a little space, whatever, but just know that if there's something I'm doing and you want to talk about it, I'm always here. Like, and mean that earnestly. Don't say it with any expectation of you have to come back and fix this problem. Just let them know like, hey, this is where I'm at. It's simple as that, yeah. I think. I think it's it's um, also one of the hardest things to be mm. like, here is my gift to you. I expect nothing back because we're human. Yes. It's so it's, 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 a, it's a trial and error. Yeah. You know? and, and I think for me, I didn't really start communicating with people until very late in my life. Like it just wasn't a part of my MO of like growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, like communication with my parents was like, I was told what to do and I do what I do. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with that for a long time where I just didn't communicate. And so, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's very different with where that where that is. Mm -hmm. And so take it, take it day by day. I think it's also like, I don't know how long this person's been friends with, with this person, but mm -hmm. people change and you don't, you're not required to stay friends with somebody. And if, and if that person is less interested in being your friend and doesn't want to spend the time with you, then maybe take a hint <laughs> and, yeah. and, and say like, okay, like here, is this where I'm thinking this is where we're at? Like, like, are we not really friends anymore? Cause that's kind of what this sounds like. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this person's way more into their friend than their friends into them. And if their friend is not giving them the time, then forget about it. Like not forget about well, it, but, but yeah, but forget about it. Forget, forget about, about it. it. I think that's a fair point though. But that also brings me back to like, if that's where you're at and the friendship really is ending because that person wants their space, then at this point, you don't really have anything to lose by checking in and being like, hey, let's, sure. let's clear the air. Um, and worst case scenario is they voice that and then you don't have to wonder anymore. It's the same thing when people are like, I don't know whether or not to ask out my crush. I'm like, well, you're miserable right now. Mm -hmm. Check in about it. I think communication is a superpower. I was like, I was at an event and people are like really taken aback by it. Like I was in a, at an event recently where um, I ended up running into this guy where like we had like a little bit of like minor, I wouldn't say beef, but there was just like a little bit of like weird energy between us from the last time I'd seen him. It was just like, oh, weird how you said that. No, we didn't really connect on this thing. Mm. So I literally just like when I saw him, I was just like, hey man, last time we uh, we saw each other, th this happened and this happened. Like I just want to say no hard feelings. And it was literally a moment of like, oh yeah, well that's where this was coming from. And that's what this is coming from. We ended up talking for like an hour and just being buddies 
about it. Like it's so hard to mentally break down those barriers, letting yourself know that that's something you can do, but that's something you can do. And people are like shocked when you just talk. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's and I mean, some, some of the most growth comes from having an uncomfortable conversation. Like yeah. you, you have to have those uncomfortable conversations if you want any sort of like this is this is clearly bothering this person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just to have the conversation. And if they're like, yeah, mm, eh, mm, eh, then f them. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I feel like if you if you always tackle things, especially communication, with a level and cool head, and don't try to put too much pressure on anybody else, basically be like as good a version of yourself as possible. In that, then you don't even have anything to lose in terms of like reputation. Mm -hmm. Like if you were just like, hey, I'd really like to talk about this, and that person goes like, did you hear such and such tried to talk to me about that? They're crazy. Like. That's yeah. not something that's going to happen. Also, don't expect complete honesty from from the person when that's you true. confront them. Because if somebody confronted me, like, "Hey, like, are we not really friends?" It's really hard to be. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect the person to be completely honest back. But mm -hmm. to at least voice how you're feeling to that person about, "Hey, I want to be your friend. I really enjoy spending time with you. What What's up with this? Mm -hmm. Why do you keep blowing me off?" Like. At least put it out there. Put your cards out there and see see what they throw back. Yeah. yeah. And just make sure you're not accusatory either. Like you have been canceling plans. Just be like, I feel like we haven't seen each other as much. If there's something you want to talk about, I'd love to. Also, mm -hmm. there's a lot more people out there that will probably treat you right. That's and true. And it's hard to divorce friends. It really is. But sometimes yeah. it's time. That's and, a thing. you know, if they're not giving you the, the respect and the time of day and they're not calling you back and texting you back, then it's difficult. But there's plenty of other people out there. Plenty yeah. of fish. This, plenty of fish to be bros with. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of plenty of fish, Aussie Zombies asks, how do you break up with a girl in the nicest way possible? Mm. Um, wow. I think I think this is something that... that I've kind of learned over over time like don't don't think of yourself as like like oh but I want to be like the nicest person like oh I have to like come out being like the good guy it's more about just being honest mm -hmm. and if you want to break up with somebody just break up with them be honest about about how you feel and and say like this isn't working for me obviously like yeah don't be an asshole mm -hmm. but you can't be vague for right. for the sake of being nice, right? Like, you don't don't think of yourself as like this nice, like oh, but I have to be the good guy mm -hmm. out of this. Like, yeah, that's not really possible. You you have to um, be a version of yourself that you can be proud of. Be as kind as possible, but be as straightforward as possible. But you also have to remember it's a breakup, and if the other person still wants to be in the relationship, there is not a single version of how you can say a thing, where you can do it, when you can do it, that's going to make them stoked about it, right? It's sort of like, how do I tell someone their loved one passed in a way that they're actually going to be super chill with it? Like, you can't. <laughs> it's a really hard thing, and you're starting a grieving process for them. So do what you can, be as honest as possible, and then move on because you know it's it hurts. Breakups suck. It's going to hurt the person a little bit, but you can't stay in something forever just because you don't want to have that conversation. I remember my friend didn't break up with uh, his girlfriend at the time for like six months because the girl was going through a hard time. She was having like mm. she had like her exams at school and all these things. And so he kept making excuses for continuing the relationship mm. because he wanted to be the nice person mm -hmm. and not put on more stress for her. And then years later, I realized that wanting to be nice is more selfish than anything. You, like you said, yeah. you want to be seen as the nice guy or mm -hmm. the nice girl, and that's why you're not doing the hard thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to remember not how you think you would want to be treated, but how you think that that person wants to be treated. And that person yeah. probably wants honesty, yeah. not a sham relationship for X amount of months because you're trying to be the nice guy. You're not yeah. doing them a the nice favor girl. by pretending to still be happy. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure those six months in that relationship were probably not that great. Right. No. Like, it's just like them just being miserable, being like, oh, but I should do it. Is now a good time? No. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's kind of like a lie. Too. Super selfish. You're just yeah. stringing, you're, you're screwing that person over of like six months of their life of that sort of process that they're going to have to go through much later. Mm -hmm. 
that's yeah it's not easy we acknowledge that it's not easy Mm -hmm. but you gotta do it and it goes back to communication right i think a lot of these answers are going to be just communication Mm -hmm. and and you know like we've gone through a good amount of our life and it's still hard we still like it's still it's still a thing where it's like it's not the immediate action you have to you're like okay i should communicate this all right i'm gonna pump myself up i'm gonna communicate here we go we're gonna communicate and then you know, you yeah. you bust out the question, but mm. you know it's it's a it's a journey, and I think everyone goes through it. The breakup might not be a list of things that they did wrong; it might just be a feeling. Yeah, like I don't feel a, this. Yeah. A gut feeling, and and you don't have to be prepared with a list of reasons and excuses of why you want to break up. It's this doesn't feel like something that I can continue, mm-hmm. and this doesn't feel right to me. Like it's mm. okay to to. In something on a feeling. You know, this goes back to the 10-year relationship one too, but a lot of the times I had a hard time um, letting go of relationships because I felt like I failed. Like I was, mm. I like there was something wrong with me that I couldn't keep a relationship together. Like I had done something terribly wrong mm-hmm. that I need to continue trying to fix it and fix it and fix it. And it's okay to not be able to fix something. I think it's, you know, especially, I think it's just so human to want to be like, no, you know, like I I can, I can put it back together and it's a thing that holds together and it's beautiful. And sometimes it's okay to just leave it. Um, Speaking of fixing things, Jorthan Ronald uh, asked, if you're in the same job with the person who was a bully in high school, would you be friends with or not? How do you do it in this situation? Wow. Ooh. I mean, I think it's also like a, a thing where it's like, how many years out of high school is this? I, I mean, people people are entirely different people from high school out. Mm-hmm. Like, I would I would give the person a chance, I guess, but that's tough if they're just like a big piece of shit in high school. Yeah. I would yeah. say, I would say um, you're not required to be friends with somebody at a job. Mm-mm. And in many cases, it could be detrimental. And if you already know that they were a bully, I don't know. You don't need to be, fr- you don't need to be friends with somebody at work. It also depends, I think, on what kind of bully we're talking about. Bullying of any kind is not okay, but there's some people that like actively go out of their way to like ruin your life and be like, hey, what's up? Whatever nickname I've come up for, you know, for you every single day. And then they like push you down. Or there's someone who's just like, yeah, that dude was kind of like weird to me in high school. I would consider them a bully. Sometimes the latter people don't realize they're doing it. Teenagers are just awful in Mm -hmm. so many ways. Mm -hmm. And so for that very reason, if it's that kind and they weren't actively going out of their way to ruin your life, I would give them a chance, like Mm -hmm. you said. At the same time, like you like you said, Ian, it's okay to not be friends with people at your job, but I think the thing I would want to avoid is treating them a little bit less properly than you would with another employee because then it, it falls on you, unfortunately. Like if you say to someone at a job, like, they're like why are you treating uh, Greg weirdly? It's like, oh, well, he bullied me in high school. Yeah. You're going to come across as like, um, yeah. okay, do we need to talk about this with HR? Like it's unfortunate, but sometimes bullies don't always get what's coming to them. You just have to be as, uh, you can only control yourself in that situation. And I think, you know, that they found, you know, a lot of bullies are bullies because of things that are going on back at home. Sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe they escaped a a not great environment after high school. You know, maybe they're better people. Maybe they've come to terms with their behavior. They've improved. And I think it's, I think it's good to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't mean you immediately have to like forgive them. Cause like, I know when someone is mean to you in high school and does whatever they do, that affects you forever. Like it's, <laughs> it sucks. It really does. And it, it sticks with you, but you do have control over what you do now. And hopefully, hopefully they've changed somehow. Yeah, yeah. it's gotta be, that's a difficult one. That's a tricky one. I, I think it's just a, an exercise of can you rise above it? Can mm-hmm. you lead by example? Can you be bigger than that, that, you know, that event and that experience and that person? And can mm-hmm. you lead with compassion? It's hard. I mean, we're not all the Dalai Lama, you know, it's right. like, I think it's an exercise and I think it's nuanced because 
we don't understand what the relationship is like now. Mm -hmm. But just know that there are layers and, you know, who knows, maybe that person feels really guilty about it and they aren't ready to communicate and say sorry just yet. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a lot of layers to it that interesting you know yeah what if our next tweet is like hey how do i apologize to a coworker who i used to bully in high school yeah like it's <laughs> that's an interesting thought and and it goes back to communication, communication. right it's yep. just asking the hard question all your life's problems can be solved with yeah. communication yeah surprisingly a lot of these are just solved with just being honest and mm -hmm. communicating i mean that's that's most problems in this gosh darn world. Well, what can we take from that though? Like the fact that everybody's problems are so different, but it all boils down to that one thing. Like how do you times. day to day work on that as a muscle and build mm -hmm. that? Like I'm honestly asking. Yeah. Well, here's, here's one that maybe can't be fixed with communication. Um, the Hannah, Hannah M bunch of numbers. <laughs> this one's funny. I mean, funny for me. Uh, I'm constantly third wheeling one of my best friends and his girlfriend, and it's really uncomfy. Like literally right now, I'm just sitting on my phone while they are canoodling help. Oof. Uh, Oof. <laughs> I think we can gauge from this question that you are most likely in high school. And if not, then your friends are a little bit immature. Nothing wrong with hanging out with a couple. There's no such thing as necessarily being the third wheel when you're all adults. You're just hanging out and having fun. Mm -hmm. But if they're just like, hey, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Like, that's gross and weird. So it might be who you to communicate that you would love that your time with them is. Oh, what was that? No, nothing. Oh, sorry. You looked up like a like a bush baby. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it might it might behoove you to um I don't know communicate that when you're with them you'd love it to be a little bit more involved for everybody and then you'll give them more space and more time for them to be on their own when that time comes but again if you're on the younger side they may not take that properly they're gonna be like can you believe Hannah she's acting so crazy I'm sorry I don't know I wish I had more for this I just started talking and now no here we are. I, th I think it's it's <laughs> it is good advice that it's like it does get better right for like, sure I, I i feel like i've been a third wheel on many many dates and it doesn't feel like the date and me like it feels like three people hanging out yeah they might be in a relationship but it's not like they're making out in front of me yeah and so yeah th th like you said that's an adult three-wheel relationship totally last time i went to japan it was with kevin and his wife Lacey and me and it wasn't like oh yeah i'm going with my buddy and his wife it was like three friends and you know that's an adult way to do things i mean yeah Lacey, Lacey was a third wheel on that one let's be real <laughs> that's true well we kept holding then, hands you and i <laughs> <laughs> but then at a, at a point at a point you broke off Right, but and, it wasn't and, because they were like smooching and being like, hi, well, honey yeah. bear. Like it was because I desperately enjoy my alone time and yeah. wanted to explore the world alone in an incredibly safe country. Mm -hmm. Maybe Hannah, if, if, you, if you think this is uncomfortable, maybe you should just stop third wheeling. Like they... Maybe they don't have a problem with it, but if but you're if you're uncomfortable by it, you don't need to hang out with them when they're both together. Like if you want to just hang out with your friend, be like, hey, what are you doing today? And he's like, oh, I'm hanging out with my girlfriend. We're probably gonna like canoodle for you know watch a movie and canoodle. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Just let me know like when you want to hang out, just like you and me. Like if you want to do something, just you and me. Be like, well, you know, if it's like the three of us, is am I intruding? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do because, you guys want a little bit of space? Yeah, or, yeah. Like maybe they're like newly dating. So they're just like all over each other. And I love you. No, I love you. And yeah, I don't want to be around for that. No, of course third not. Wheel. Yeah. I don't want to be reminded of my, my singleness. <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> Ew, they're smooching. So Yuck. I think Hannah, the ultimate advice is to get yourself a partner and out canoodle your friend. No, no, no. Out canoodle. <laughs> no, no, no. Over canoodle him. And that's coming from licensed marriage and family counselor. <laughs> yep. Ethan from Smosh. That's right. Uh, okay, so here's this Here's this next one mm -hmm. um, on the dating world. Whoa. Um, Alex Phasma said, I just got a dating app for the first time and I'm not that great at convos. Any advice? Take it away, my dude. Yeah. Samari, so you've never used a dating app never, ever. ever before because the internet didn't exist when you started dating Peter. No, 64 years ago when we started dating? Yeah. Yeah, no, it didn't exist. 
Just stuck out of time, <laughs> ageless being. That's the new lore around Mari. Just two time lords. <laughs> Just two time lords. Damien, have you? Uh, yeah, actually. I was in a Devil. two and a half year relationship uh, with a girl that I met on Tinder. And other than that, I've used dating apps a little bit, but never went on more than a couple dates with any girl that I met on there. Um, so it was literally either the longest relationship I've ever had or just like, uh, didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, got nothing against them. It's, it's tricky to get a conversation started for sure. I think for me, it's like, if the conversation starts, if, you know, you connect with the person, make a little funny conversation, whatever, but really like get down to like core values for, for me, it's like, I kind of get a couple things out of the way, but I don't want to have a th a thirty a thirty like message long conversation. If I think that their values sort of line up, then I just want to meet them. Interesting conversation over text is not a real conversation. I agree, and you can't get a real feel for the person until you actually meet them face to face. I think that's a that's a big issue. Some people just continue to to text on there and then they meet the person mm. and then they have all these like sort of like preconceived notions of who the person is or maybe. Right. Or maybe they're like, well, I already put this much time into it, so mm. I need to like see it out. Interesting. Like, no, you just need to like go, like just make the conversation as short as possible and be like, hey, do you want to meet up? Like, do you want to get some coffee? Do you want to get a drink? Do you want to get some food? Do you want to, you know, do this, whatever. Just pitch something and just set a date. That's really interesting because I... Hearing that now, that makes total sense. And like looking back at the times I've used dating apps, I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably should have done that. But at the same time, I always feel like for the safety of both parties, like I, I imagine, especially as a woman being on the Internet, being like, hope this guy's not a murderer or whatever, like <laughs> jumping into that quickly. Like, do you want to meet up? Like, how do you not come across spooky? Well, you you pitch a public place. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, like I'll generally I've. I've left it up to the woman to decide where I'm like, I'm like, Hey, do you want to like, do like, I always pitch a coffee in case their, you know, drink sounds a little too, you know, there's a implications. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Smooching. <laughs> women aren't dumb. Like they, they can do their own research. Like if, if they want, like I've, I've, you know, gone on dates with, with the girls that are like, Oh yeah, I, I looked you up mm. to like, make sure you weren't a psycho. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, I think that's that's just what you have to do. Although there have been a couple people that have like, we can go to this place near near my place, just show up at, at my place and we'll just walk over there. Mm. And I had to be like, hey, don't do that. That's <laughs> not safe because you don't know who yeah. I am. Like I could be a, I could be a creep and you just yeah. gave me your address. Don't, mm -hmm. so th that's the biggest advice I can give. Uh, um, ladies and men, uh, don't give a stranger your address. That's very true. You don't know who they are, really. Unless they're the murderer and they're trying to lure you in. Yeah, I know. That's true. But I didn't go into their place. No. I stayed outside. Like, that's funny. This looks an awful lot like an abandoned warehouse. And they're like, ah, yeah, I get that hipster, right? <laughs> come anyway, on, come, come on, on in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, for me, like, it also weeds out the people that aren't serious about Mm -hmm. about it like some people they're just playing a game oh on, yeah on apps like they just want to have the conversation and get the endorphin rush hmm. of like oh this person Look, liked me yeah. yeah so there's been times when like i had like a fun little teeny tiny conversation i'm like hey like let's meet up and then silence i'm like cool that actually the one bit of advice because that, that all actually is great advice the one bit of advice i can also contribute from my limited time on dating apps is whatever stigma you have about dating apps like don't people just want to always hook up don't people always want to whatever there's every type of person on mm -hmm. dating apps and they all want different things and something will line up with what you want. Yes, there are people that only want hookups, but if that's not what you want, there are also the people there who are like, maybe just like you, like they've never had a dating app before. Their friends are like, come on, Bethany, just download Tinder for a minute. Okay, maybe I'll meet someone nice. And then you're both there being like, hi, this is so weird, right? I don't know, but you would both ideally like a relationship. Like someone exactly like you is on there. Don't be afraid of recognizing when someone's going to want something different and moving on that's that's the thing um yeah 
I'm going to have it. Uh, get off it. Get off it. Come on now. Get off it. I'm ready is for Australia. Australian or oh, British? England, isn't it? <laughs> oh, would your, would your head be turned, love? No, I don't know. It's like early days, isn't it? <laughs> love Island. Yes, so, Australia. No, not Australia. So <laughs> NatV97 asked, how to motivate yourself to go back to the gym? I used to go a lot currently. I haven't gone in five months. I need to go back. I'm there myself. I think a big a big part of it's building a routine. Like, like she said, she used to go a lot. And she hasn't gone mm. in five months. It's it's so much like once you start going and you build a routine for yourself, as humans, we're very like habitual kind of routine mm-hmm. animals. Mm-hmm. So once you, once you kind of like start to build that, I think it's a lot easier to go if you just commit to going. For a lot of people, like eating better also encourages like mm-hmm. that cycle of of going to the gym as well. That's me, but at the, I'm at the same point where like mm-hmm. I was traveling, <laughs> going on dates instead of going to the gym. Mm-hmm. So, I've I've been I've been out of I've been out of the loop as well. We got to get back to the gym, boy. We got to do it, my dude. Cuz that's the thing. Like everything Ian just said, you know the answer. Mm-hmm. That all makes sense. Everyone's like eat better, sleep well, go to the gym. But like th- there's advice that you hear and you're like, yeah, I know. But sometimes you actually have to let yourself hear it. Like really you have to in that moment be like, hey, right in this exact moment, I have the power to go to the gym. I am tired. I don't feel like I had a good meal. I had such a long day at work. In that moment, that is the time where you have to do it. How do you start going back to the gym? You do it once because once you show yourself oh wait i can go even though i'm tired i can go even though i'm a little bit hungry and my tummy's a little off like that's when you get back into the routine and it is very much a routine i used to be at the point where if i missed going to the gym a couple days a week i would be like oh, i feel awful it sucks now i haven't been in the gym in a few months <laughs> yeah. and i have no problem with it but i just need to decide hey yeah. today's the day i go maybe today maybe after maybe work today. today we're gonna film like seven videos today mm-hmm. i'm gonna be so tired but that's always gonna be my life so let's yeah. i'm just gonna I think, go i think also get, find a gym buddy find a friend that that is in the same position as you no one goes and to my gym <laughs> <laughs> find like find somebody that can hold you accountable if you're gonna find like a gym buddy you don't have to like work out next to them mm. just be like hey meet you there at this time great maybe i'll pick you up maybe you'll pick me up yeah. and you guys just go there you don't have to see each other mm-hmm. while you're there you just need to get there. And once you're there, you kind of have to work out. Yeah. Shane and I used to go to the same gym and it was so much easier. Now you'd be like, oh yeah, I'll see you there at like four. And then we would never work out together because Lord knows he's way stronger than I am, but it would still be this moment of like, hey, good to see you. Well, I'm going to get back to my set. Also, the gym isn't the only way to get exercise. Yes. Like you can, and Mari, obviously you haven't said anything yet. And I know that there's a lot you can say because you've done a lot of different things, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, I don't know if you live near the ocean, but surfing, is like probably one of the best workouts you can get. Rock climbing, aerial. You know, th- there's a million different ways of getting of getting an exercise. Pole dancing, um, the best. <laughs> so good. And you could speak to all those things. Mm-hmm. It's it's really about finding your sort of like flow, mm-hmm. like finding something that you're that you're excited to do. And maybe you just haven't found that specific thing. Yeah, because the gym is something I hate the gym. Mm -hmm. I absolutely despise it. I get so bored within minutes. I feel like I don't know what to do with a kettlebell if someone's not telling me what to do with it. I have to play Mm -hmm. like that's the I have to trick myself into working out. And that's me. And everyone's different. There are are people who can go to a gym and be like, all right, I'm doing 25 sets of blah, 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 blah. And they know they have Mm -hmm. a regimen. And if you work that way, work that way. If you don't, there's so many other options you can get. Just try out a class here and there. And maybe you're going to really like uh, like exercise hip hop classes. Maybe you just want to go on TikTok and find a ton of dance videos and do it that way. Maybe you just want to do Just Dance. You know, maybe you just want to do 10 push-ups and 10 burpees in the morning. It takes you less than five minutes. And that is a start. But mm-hmm. I think it's a journey. And, you know, like we've all been on very different journeys. And, you know, for me, I went from dancing eight to 10 hours every single day, well, except for weekends, so like six days a week to an extremely sedentary life when I was at Smosh Games. And I was perfectly happy just sitting around for eight to 10 hours Mm -hmm. at work. And now I've found a balance where I sit around and play video games a lot still at home. I like to move. I just, I want to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I don't want to, 
go, you know, like work out, work out, then I'll go to a park. That's cool. And then there's a jungle gym. And it makes you really tired after like 10 minutes on a jungle <laughs> gym. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on the type of person you are. Sometimes, you know, if you're really analytical and strategic, you can just print out like a, a regimen and just stick by that and it'll be dope. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm on this like cult fix for a place called F45 right now because they don't have a mirror. You just work out to like a, like the, like how the do you, window. Then how do you stare at yourself? I can't. What? I hate it. What? You don't like looking at yourself at the gym? I don't. Hmm. That's the whole yeah. point of going to the gym. So you can just sort of like check yourself in the mirror a little bit. Too many years of ballet and just looking at myself <laughs> oh, and God. judging. Can't I just, imagine. I can't do I actually it. can't imagine. Yeah. Kev- wow. Kevin, what's your workout advice? Yeah, because you, you're the shredder for multiple reasons. Yeah. Right, oh my God. of course. Uh, workout advice is uh, the body knows. Always listen to the body. So when you go and you're going hard, if it feels like you don't need to go as hard, don't go as hard. Because you don't want to hurt yourself. Uh, and form over weight. Yes. That's the big one. Form, form is so big. Because you could go lift big weights, but if your uh, form is bad, you'll break your body. Uh, case in point example, I, I just uh, deloaded my weights recently because my form I felt was off. Mm. So I'm not lifting as heavy as I was, but my form is on point. There Hell it yeah. Is. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. dude I, hell think, yeah. I think that is, a, that is a big thing. A lot of people, especially people that are getting back into working out, they're like, I need to get, I need to lose weight. I need to get ripped. And they just go freaking hard for like a week and then they injure themselves. Yeah, and yeah. you can't do and it. And then you stop working and out then for stop, six yep. months. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah, very guilty into... of that. Mm. I think, so. I think we're all, we've all kind of been there where we go a little, we get a little too excited. Mm-hmm. We want immediate results and we're not thinking, we're not thinking instead of like, I need to look hot by summer. You like, I think it's probably more, I think it's probably better to think, I want to be mobile at 60. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I want to yeah, I want to be able to still be able to run, not have bad knees mm-hmm. when I'm 60. I want to be able to travel when I'm 70. Like we should be thinking longevity. Like mm-hmm. like just the long game, not I need to have gigantic biceps and be able to lift a car. I- thousand yeah. <laughs> percent agree with you it's not how you look we should be thinking about how do we feel that's true mm. that's true and you know even if you do have a little bit of a vanity goal along with that that's only human that's only natural but it all comes with it you can have it all by focusing on the health and how you feel and if you feel healthy odds are you're probably going to look a little bit more uh, trim or healthy as well mm-hmm. but i want to look like j-lo at 50 dude yeah right dude She's a dancer. Do you guys know The Rock is 80? <laughs> Stop. Um, Wayne you the know Rock? he's an actual rock? He's graphite. He's literally, <laughs> lightning struck a boulder and out of it he walked. And so, that is how he was born. So that does it for the advice cast. I want to finish off the uh, the podcast with a, a fun little thing mm. that we're calling Shoot Dude, where you guys have s- submitted um, some stories that may that make us go, Shoot Dude. Um, so this one comes from a uh, former Spencer's employee. And I'm just going to read this one. Spencer's the store? The store. Spencer's Gifts. Okay. So, so Spencer's Gifts, if you, if those that are not, are not in the know, is like a novelty store, mm-hmm. has a lot of gag gifts, just silly stuff. Also yeah. like lava lamps and everything that's lava lamp adjacent, like that circle plate that has like lightning going across it. And if you press it, it's like, oh, the lightning's going to my finger. It's like that, yeah. the store. A lot of like irreverent shirts, like your mom's hot and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Stacy's mom's mom has got it going mm-hmm. on. I'll bang your mom. It's yeah. also the place that, you know, Ace family went to and thought it was funny to have their little tiny toddler daughter suck on like a penis <gasps> lollipop or whatever. No. What? Yeah. They thought it was funny. Oh, no. Ace family. <laughs> Yeesh. Uh, anyway, Jeez. so this person used to work at Spencer's. Um, so they it goes like this. So the story begins a few years ago when I was but a naive 22-year-old working at Spencer's Gifts as a manager. I was by myself when a woman walks in with a man on a leather dog leash casually trailing behind her. To say I was caught off guard is an understatement, but hey, I'm not one, I guess, to kink shame. So as a man on a leash. Okay. Um, I don't know if he's on all fours, but I'm assume he was. Their visit was pretty normal until it came time to pay when the woman said, oh, I forgot my wallet. Would you care to watch him for me while I, while I went to the car and grab it? 
and proceeded to hand me the leash. Everything went in slow motion in my head. I thought, customers are always right. And I just said, sure. And I took it from her. So she took the leash. So now she is in possession of a man in a leash. And she goes on to say, uh, she left and this man is just staring me down, not saying a word, but I can't stand the silence. So I offer him some cookies I hid behind the register. Aww. That's when more customers decided to walk in. They get up to the register and all they see is me holding a man's leash while he gives me a what the f- your crazy look while I'm feeding him Oreos. I have zero filter and tell these ladies, if you give me a minute to tie him up, I can be right with you. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. Needless to say, they didn't want help and left because that's the normal thing to do in that situation. The man's owner... It comes back soon and after uh, comes back soon after and thanks me for watching him and asks if he was good like he was her poodle. I tell her he was because I wasn't gonna lie to her and he was very well behaved because my experience with leashmen is limited <laughs> and I thought he was. You're not supposed to give Oreos to poodles. That's true. Yeah. Who's cleaning that up? Oh my um, god. Look, that's a great story. Well, that's a big old shoot, shoot dude. dude. <laughs> I'm not one for kink shaming, but don't make someone else do something. Don't make them. Can you hold that? on to my my man pet? Yeah, it's like you're the dom now. Wow. Yeah. Th- oh wowie, my god. Zowie. Um, okay. Working know, retail sucks. I feel like it, <laughs> it, it really. If that's does. one takeaway we can have. It's, working retail sucks. Yeah. Yep. You know, I think a Spencer store is probably the best place that that could have happened. Or Hot Topic. Or Hot Topic, yeah. I, don't, I feel like Hot Imagine Topic. Imagine being be in worse. a Walgreens and you're like, oh, this is happening now. I like. I hate the obsession with the like the customer's always right because that's never been used to anyone's advantage who is not a total <laughs> piece of crap. Like it's yeah. literally like when I worked retail, this woman was trying to like return shoes that had a stain on them that were like two years old, and she was literally just constantly like, "Well, I'm the customer's always right. I demand to speak to your manager. Do I have to get corporate on the phone?" It was like Karen Energy times a thousand. <laughs> we need to get rid of the customer's always right policy. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, maybe sometimes they're wrong, and maybe it's okay to look a customer in the eyes and say, "Hey." I'm not doing that. Mm. And then they don't have power to do anything. And when they call corporate, go, corporate goes, you were going to try to make them hold a man on a leash. Maybe don't do that, you piece of garbage. Like I would have said yes. I would have held him. Just for the story? No, I mean, I would have just, <laughs> I'm just too nice to say no. I like, would say I would yes be, too. Like, yeah. So I was like, hold this. I don't know if I'd feed him Oreos though. That's really funny. I think I would just ask what's going on. I would be like, sure, I can hold, I can, I can do that for you. And then I'd be like, so is she your dom? What's this like? Yeah. You know, I, I think I would just ask questions. Yeah. I would say I our store has a Somebody pet policy me. and I understand that if this is your service <laughs> animal, you're going to need to take them with you because if they're not with you, they're no longer a service animal. What if animal. they bring yeah, out a vest and they wear it and they're like, now I'm on duty. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, um, that was the advice cast. Let us know um, if you guys want to see more of this. Also, um, the next time we do it, please submit your advice questions. Mari, Damien, thank you so much for for delivering some wonderful advice. You got it. Yay, if advice. A, if somebody ever hands you a per- leashed person, maybe say no. Just say, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and also, if you want to submit your shoot dudes, all you have to do is email shootdude at smosh.com. You got more weird people on leash stories? Yeah. Too bad. We already did one. If we started there, where is this column yeah, going to go? Where is this <laughs> segment going to be like? Yeah, you think you got a shoot dude? Submit it. All right. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, my favorite coffee still exists. Get some because it's still delicious as all heck. Smosh.store, get all the new sort of merch. Sh- Damien, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Damien is wearing a nice little sweater right there. Like and um, anyway, we'll see you guys later. Thank you guys so much. Bye. 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 Passed out. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs>